Hello, it's Craftus. Have you ever wondered what if Korok steals items from Link? Hmm? Let's find out. For the base, I'll use this iron rod because I'm always concerned about the strength of my products and so I can't use soft aluminum wire for it. I inserted this rod into a special wooden holder that I made from two wooden blocks and fastened them together with self-tapping screws. Great, when the heavy duty base is ready, I can use less durable materials. But my inner restlessness still won't let me rest and I'll twist these aluminum rods into one rod with a drill. So beautiful. And now I am at peace and can continue to make the frame. I must confess to you that the idea didn't come to me on its own. I was surfing the internet as usual and came across this cute drawing. So it was this drawing that inspired me to create this figure. I'll leave a link to the author in the video description. I had time to write the frame in foil while I was telling you this. Look at that, it already looks really nice. Well, it's time to sculpt. This time I'll use polymer clay and cover the entire surface evenly with it. To smooth the scenes between layers I use a clay softener and my own finger. Fingers are very useful and versatile thing. But as you can see, the surface turned out very uneven and I'll be adding small pieces of clay and smoothing them out. I'm a little intimidated by that skin texture and especially the belly button. <coughs> Let's bake it. Um, not bad, but look at this. What's the chicken legs? I'm gonna have to redo this. I'm making such thin legs because I don't want to make his clothes out of polymer clay. I wish he had real leather boots. And his shirt will be made of felt, because I love the texture of that material and it will look great on the smooth surface of the cork. I marked the places where the sleeves would be located and cut them out with a sharp knife. Regular scissors did not do the job for some reason. Using a fine brush and white acrylic paint, I'll apply the pattern that such a shirt is supposed to have. As you can see, there are some fine fibers sticking out of the shirt that are interfering with the pattern, so I have to make very small brush strokes to smooth them out. Now the shirt is absolutely done. As I said before, I want to make boots out of real leather. And you know, it turned out to be tricky. But I found a simple solution and have to make boots out of just two pieces. The laser glues to the metal perfectly with PVA glue, but I'll still secure it with the binder clip to make it secure. I'll make the toe of the boot out of this oddly shaped piece. I'm gonna stick the sticking part inside and bend it in half. Of course I glued this part before gluing it to the boot. And now a trick! This strip of fabric I need to make gloves. I originally wanted to make this entirely out of leather, but it turned out to be too thick and the gloves looked clunky. So I decided to wrap the fabric around arm and place a piece of leather on top of it to make a sort of leather armor. To visually separate the palm from the forearm, I tied a thread and it looks good to me. Now I'll get to work on those straps and belts. But there's a problem, the piece of leather I have is too small and it won't make a long enough belt to fully encircle this big guy. But I found a solution. I'll just cut the belt in the shape of an arc. Let's see what happens. I love geometry in school, so I know that half the perimeter of a circle is longer than its diameter. Great, it was just long enough. The belt buckles I made from safety pins. You could even make them fully functional if you tried hard enough but mine will be decorative. The only thing you'll need is a pair of round nose pliers and wire cutters. You can make it out of wire, but I didn't have the right thicknesses of wire, but I had pins. Well, it looks a lot like a real belt. To keep the belt from falling off, I put a little glue on it, but be careful, you only have one try to glue it on correctly or the short will get stained with glue and ruined. I had a maniacal urge to make holes in the belt, but I think the belt would be wonderful without them. Also, the fabric got wrapped around the drill, and creases appeared under the belt. 
although they even added to the realism of it. I decided to add the clasp, which I made from a scrap needle, and tried to stick it in with my finger. Of course the needle pierced my finger, not the thick skin. Well, it was worth it. I've decided I'm only going to make two belts. The belt around his waist, and the one over his shoulder. I tried to make a third belt, but it ruined the whole look. By the way, I don't glue the very tip of the strap, so it stick out a bit, and appears to be unglued. It's time to arm. I want to make planks out of this pine branch I found in the park. First, I sawed off a flat part on one side to make it easier to saw the center boards later on. There are pockets of resin in the thicknesses of the pine wood, which is exactly why there is so much smoke. Well, my fingers are safe and I have the right size board. I'm gathering sawdust for my future project, which I will show you, so be sure to subscribe to the channel so as not to miss it. I used stain to show off the texture and give a nice color to the wood, and I made the handle out of regular toothpick. I made it long on purpose, because I don't know what length I want it to be. It's the first time I ever made something out of polymer clay, and I love how easy it is to work and drill with. The handle goes in tight, but holds securely, and the excess can now be cut off. I have a lot of boards left, and I'm gonna make a shield out of them. I just glued them together with glue and sewed out a circle. This time, instead of wood stain, I used acrylic paint, which I diluted heavily with water. As you can see, the result is still decent. Now I need to make the metal edging. But for this project, I decided not to melt metal to make the metal parts. I thought I regret it. So I had to make this layer of polymer clay and wrap the shield with it. When I removed all the excess, it was a chicken pot pie. Let's see what's inside it. Ah, it's a shield. Okay, that's good. But I need to make the edges of the shield more angular. And tap a steel ball to make indentations from the forging. I wonder how long it would take me to create an edging out of real metal. I make these little holes to simulate nails. Sometimes I can't resist the roots to add more little details. And in the center of the shield I let this bump. I don't know what it's properly called, but it protects the hand, because in real shield there is a hole there. As you know, polymer clay does not stick to wood after baking. And that's just what I need because now I can take the trim off and paint it without much effort. I really like the bronze Spartan shields in the Zack Snyder's movie, so I decided to make the shield edging bronze. But actually my silver paint just dried up. No one will ever see a little thing like that, but why not? Glue the parts back on and the shield is ready. So what's next? A bow? Yeah, I'll make it out of a thinner stick concretely from this part here, because it's already a little bad. So link all the excess. I just need the middle part of this stick, and to make it handy I just glued a paper bow template to the wood. So link all the excess. A little sanding, and I soak it in stain to match the color of the sword. I wrap the handle with thread. I use the same thread to make a bowstring. It works. As my grandpa said, if there is sword, there must be shield. If there is bow, there must be arrows. But I only have toothpicks. Hmm, too thick to make arrows. That's much better. I made the plumage out of thin paper and just glued it on. You're probably wondering why there is a toothbrush on the table. A toothbrush is a very useful tool if you are creating miniatures. You never know where it will come in handy. Ok, errors require a quiver. I made it out of leftover leather. But just gluing would be too easy. So I'm gonna sew it with thread. 
but the needle can pierce the double layer of leather, so I drill holes again. It's better that way. I insert the needle on the same side, but always in the adjacent hole, because I want the stitch to be cross-stitched. My fingers got tired of sewing after all, and I pulled the needle with pliers. Paint a little gold pattern, so the quiver doesn't look too simple. How comfortable is it to wear the quiver this way? Do the arrows not fall out of it? At least my arrows aren't holding up the way I need them to, and have gone downhill. It doesn't look pretty. So let's glue them. Fewer arrows, but it's beautiful. Of course I couldn't forget the shika slate. I'll make it out of wood. I want to make it voluminous, so I'm going to draw the pattern with the pencil first, and then I'll make indentations with the rotary tool. So far it looks like a cutting board. I choose a dark brown as the base color, and I'll put gold glitter paint in the recesses. My camera turned off and I didn't notice it, so I didn't get to shoot all the way through. But you can see the end result anyway. Hmm, I forgot something. This branch on the sword. To make it, I took for a base elastic stiff wire, bent it, covered it with polymer clay, and painted it. The little berries were made from polymer clay and painted a bright red color. Mmm, delicious! And the leaves made of paper with a hole punch. I already made a whole tree with such leaves in the video about the Hobbit house. Be sure to watch it if you haven't seen it yet. I also made a pommel for the hilt of the sword. It's just a little piece of polymer clay that I painted brown. Well, the basic work is done. Now it's time to make the stand. And I want to make it out of plaster. I covered the booths with plastic wrap, so they don't spoil. Now that the boots are protected, I'll make the mold. To do this, I cut the middle part off a plastic bottle and attached it with plasticine to keep the plaster from leaking out. Plaster hardens very quickly, so there is no time to waste. I purposely made a bottom to put the figure on first. And then I made the second part, where I am already inserting the figure. I had to freeze for 5 minutes until the plaster cured, and now the formwork can be removed. Of course, I am not happy with this shape of stand. I made a thicker gypsum paste, and now I am shaping something like a huge boulder. You know what it's like? It's like making a brownie. Anyway, I got a big round boulder. But I should work on its texture, I need to make it smoother. To do this, I add quite a bit of gypsum to the water. The gypsum solution should be liquid, almost like water. And I use a regular brush to apply it to the surface of the cobblestone. And now that the gypsum has dried, you can remove these makeshift shoe covers. I just need to clean up the excess and smooth the surface a bit next to the boots. Alright, now let's paint this. To do this, I diluted the acrylic paint with water. You can also use other colors, like red or yellow, to give the stone more shades, but my cobblestone will just be grey. It's done, but where is his face? I'll make it out of this lump of clay in no time. First, I'll make a flat bread and flatten it between two pieces of plywood. I didn't think I could do it so perfectly. I prepared a paper template of the desired shape in advance. Because there is no way I could have molded it so neatly myself. Oh, there is a pattern on his face. And I know where it came from. On this paper I printed a stained glass window for the Gryffindor coming room. I'll take note that it's a great way to transfer a pattern to clay. What's left to do is to trim the edges a bit and make grooves. You know, I wish I had made this mask ahead of time, because now I can bake it with the body. I shaped it to the right shape, but when I put it on a flat surface, it straightens out. So I put a couple of wooden sticks under it, and a piece of paper under each petal. 
Let's get this painted soon and see what we end up with. I started with the dark green. Then I added a little yellow paint. I should have used a harder brush. I've been gradually adding more yellow color to the paint. Then I added white and applied the paint to the very edge of the leaf. I decided to leave those eye holes unpainted. Do you think they should have been painted over? Thanks for watching! I am sure you enjoyed the video, I have some more cool ideas and will show you them soon.